just didn't know what else to do. There was water. The cars in front of us weren't moving. And Historic flooding. The water from the other side of the median was pushing over and making waves. The fire department came through here, took somebody off of the top of that car right there. Impacts Madison's west side. Water is deeper and there is more debris in that water than people realize. Team coverage right now at 11. We want to get started right away with Charlie Shortino. Charlie, we want some relief for everyone dealing with this flooding. Well, the only relief is going to come with time. And, and we do have team coverage this morning for you of this historic flooding. And we do have some breaking news where crews have just found a body of a man missing in those flood waters. Let's go right out to Tim Elliott with those breaking They're details. In Hey, good morning, Hannah. Yeah, that's right. A body was found in this retention pond here behind me at Green Tree Park on Madison's west side. I'll step out of the way so you can see what's happening here in the distance. So we're hearing from authorities that as far as they know, this is the first fatality in Madison when it comes to flooding. Reporting live from the west side, I'm Tim Elliott, NBC 15 News. And just a couple of hours ago, there was a water rescue on Whitney Way and Gilbert Road. You see this moment, a woman was stranded on Whitney Way. Madison Fire extracted her from her car. There were no injuries. This is just one of the many water rescues that have occurred over the past 24 hours. We're keeping you updated on all of them as we learn. The National Weather Service in Milwaukee estimates the areas west of Madison could have received between 11 and 13 inches overnight on Monday into Tuesday morning. This previous record was 11.72 inches in a 24 hour period set in June of 1946. The National Weather Service said that before any records are declared, there will be a thorough review of historical records on rainfall across Wisconsin. Now this could take a while to determine. Dane County Emergency Management warns about significant flooding in the areas of Black Earth, Mesomani, and Cross Plains, saying the Black Earth Creek continues to rise and has already surpassed its previous record high. That's where our team coverage continues now with Megan Reistead on the bridge now in Black Earth. Megan. Hannah, we're standing on the bridge over Highway 14, completely washed out in a large section of this bridge. We just talked with a firefighter who says, that at one point water levels were six feet higher than they are right now. He says that that was about we're going to have more from them. That'll be at four, five and six tonight on NBC15.com. Live in Black Earth, Megan Reistead, NBC15 News. And these evacuation orders are because of the flooding on Black Earth Creek. You can see this other viewer video sent in to us. Uh, of that creek. Yes, Dane County Emergency Management says the creek is at a record high flood level. Yes, again, Black Earth, Mesomani, Cross Plains still currently under evacuation orders. Water rescues continuing to get people from homes into shelter. Our team coverage now continues with NBC 15's Amelia Jones now. And Amelia, you were in Middleton all morning where there are still cars stranded in streets and in the water. This morning, Greenway Boulevard, right by Greenway Station, looked like a ghost town. If you do work in that area, be sure to give yourself 15 to 20 minutes of extra time because there is quite a bit of traffic from cars having to get around the stranded cars that have not been moved yet. Reporting in the newsroom, Amelia Jones, NBC 15 News. Thank you, Amelia. An update on those power outages this morning still impacting quite a few people on the west of Madison. Madison Gas and Electric is reporting that more than 600 customers are without power in the Middleton and Cross Plains area as of 10 this morning. MGE says they are unable to estimate when services will be restored. We will continue to follow this and provide updates as we learn them. And one quick mention of what we learned at the top of the hour. We want to just tell you of that breaking news that we did learn that a body was found. The person who was swept away in those flood waters last night. Uh, authorities say they do not have an identification of him, but it is a man in his 70s. They have found that body. We will have more on that tonight on NBC 15 and later in this broadcast. Cast. Missing Molly Tibbetts, the Iowa College student, is found. Next at 11, for the first time in weeks, her parents have an answer. And a major train derailment in Wauwatosa, we tell you how it happened in two minutes. New at 11, officials say there was a diesel fuel spill at Maury Airport in Middleton this morning. The Middleton Fire Department says the airport is currently shut down while they access that spill. They are asking drivers to avoid airport 
road until that airport road until the fuel is cleared. More than a dozen train cars derailed around 10 p.m. last night in Wauwatosa. It happened just north of the Mayfair collection near Penzi's Spices. Authorities say the train was carrying non-hazardous material, some type of construction sand. No injuries have been reported and no additional details have been released, including the cause of this accident. We'll stay on top of that story. For the first time in a month, the parents of Molly Tibbetts have answers. She was the 20-year-old Iowa college student who vanished from a small town a month ago. This morning, we've learned her body has been recovered. Crime Stoppers of Central Iowa says it has no other details about the discovery at this time but called it a tough ending to the search. Tibbetts vanished July 18th from Brooklyn, Iowa. The $400,000 reward fund will now be used for any information that leads to those responsible for her death. No suspects have been publicly identified. Next at 11, we have a live interview with Dane County Chief of Staff Josh Westcott. He's on the line with the latest in evacuations, road closures, and what to do if dealing with those flooding damages. And as we had to break, this is viewer video from Trent B. at Black Earth Creek in Cross Plains. Make sure to send us your photos and weather video from a safe place on our NBC15 mobile app. Our team coverage of this historic flooding continues now. Crews are busy right now working around the clock as we are in a state of emergency right now in Dane County after that historic flooding overnight. We want to get an update now from the county. Josh Westcott, the chief of staff at Dane County, joins us live via phone. Josh, let's get started with the latest on evacuations happening right now. What can you tell us? Yeah, well, we're, you know, a good 18 hours since the rain really started falling in earnest, even a little bit more. And uh, we are still working, crews are still working in the far western part of the county, Anna, to make sure that we've identified, um, you know, places where people might be. And All right, Josh Westcott from Dane County, thank you so much for giving us that live update. Let's send it over now to Charlie. Now at 10, severe storms rolled through our area last night, damaging a campground in Lafayette County. Plus... This is the final call for Sun Prairie Fire Captain Corey Barr. Your dedication to training Angel Park Speedway and your love and passion for the fire service will truly be missed by all who knew and loved you. Captain Barr, this is your final call. Safety Communications Center clear. Hero is laid to rest. How a community is coping and coming together as they said their final goodbyes to Captain Corey Barr. Live from the WMTV studios, your news authority. NBC 15 News at 10 starts now. Gone but never forgotten. Thousands of people gathered in Sun Prairie today for the funeral of Captain Cory Barr this morning. Captain Cory Barr died in the line of duty on Tuesday, responding to a gas leak that resulted in an explosion in Sun Prairie. Barr was a firefighter for 15 years with the Sun Prairie Volunteer Fire Department. He was also one of the youngest to volunteer when he joined the team back in 2003. <laughs> could say something right now he would do everything the same way all over again no resistance no stepping back he would face the danger and he would do it all over again 2600 people gathered at sun prairie high school this morning and even more gathered outside along the processional route Firefighter honors, including the folding of the fl American flag, the playing of taps, and Amazing Grace on bagpipes were performed indoors at the end of the ceremony. A flyover by UW Med Flight marked the beginning of the procession from the high school to the funeral home. You talk to anybody, nobody has a single bad thing to say about him because the whole community itself just loved him to death. He was very outgoing laughing all the time and and that's that's what they're going to miss out on is, is that send off for a man who was very well liked. The procession route was just a block away from the blast site. As NBC 15's Amelia Jones explains, this was the closest for some people seeing the devastation. 
For a lot of Sun Prairie community members, this is the first time they are able to see the explosion site firsthand. And many of them came there today to pay their respects. Since Tuesday, I've been following this story and having the opportunity to meet the people of Sun Prairie. I now know what it looks like and means to be Sun Prairie strong. Reporting in the studio, Amelia Jones, NBC 15 News. A GoFundMe page has been set up for Captain Barr's family. Right now, more than $179,000 has been raised with more than 3,000 people pitching in. That's $2,000 more in just three hours when we last reported the total to you in our newscast. If you would like to help donate, you can find a link to the GoFundMe page on our website, NBC15.com. Last night, storms were so strong that parts of our area saw some damage. We will have more on that coming up. But first, meteorologist Brian Dukes joins us now. Brian, a much quieter night tonight. Oh, yeah, no question about it. Go into much more detail on that, though, coming up in your full Weather Authority forecast. Tonight, a Lafayette County campground is still picking up the pieces after a storm destroyed eight trailers. NBC 15's Caroline Peterson explains how the campground owners are recovering. The owner of Backyard Campground LLC said one person broke their arm after last night's storm flipped his camping trailer on its side. Many of the campers there last night are repeat guests, and they're all coming together to salvage what the storm left behind. The controversial removal of the Monterey Dam in Janesville begins. This video was sent to us by a viewer showing crews demolishing the dam. The city plans to create fishing areas, ponds and parks. Advocates for keeping and repairing the dam say demolishing the dam could affect the exposed riverbed environment. Coming up on NBC 15 News at 10, a community says enough is enough. We will take you to the Stop the Violence, Save the Children parade. And Bernie Sanders makes a trip around the Badger State. U.S. Senator Bernie Sanders is in Wisconsin railing with U.S. Senator Tammy Baldwin and congressional candidate Randy Bryce. Bryce is hoping to challenge Republican Speaker of the House Paul Ryan, but will first face Janesville teacher Kathy Myers in the Democratic primary. Sanders won Wisconsin in the 2016 primary over presidential candidate Hillary Clinton. Taking a stand against violence, that's what dozens of people did today in, the Ma in Madison at the second annual Stop the Violence, Save the Children parade. Community leaders joined Meadowood neighbors to stand in solidarity. Organizers say the main message is that the community is tired of the violence and it's time to make a difference. One way they hope to do that is by urging lawmakers to pass common sense gun laws. In America, we have a big voice and we can make change. And I think events like this are just the beginning. This was the second year for the event. Downtown Madison transformed into a giant art gallery today to celebrate 60 years of art fair on the square. Nearly 500 artists came to display their work, and the fair is a fundraiser for the Madison Museum of Contemporary Art. While there are many art fairs across the country, one artist said this one is special because of the community feel between the artists all coming together. I've done this for 44 years, and we have depended on art fairs, and it's harder now to find good art fairs like this. They've been um, getting bigger and less about art and more about festivals, so I'm glad this one is, is what it is. And the art fair will continue tomorrow from 10 in the morning until 5. Coming up on NBC 15 News at 10, Captain Cory Barr paid the ultimate sacrifice to save others. We will bring you more from Sun Prairie as a community says goodbye to a true hero. Heating things back up Sunday afternoon. Heat index values well into the 90s. Your weather authority forecast coming up. We continue our coverage of this morning's funeral and procession for fallen firefighter Captain Corey Barr. Along the processional route this morning from Sun Prairie High School back to the funeral home, his family and close friends followed. Captain Barr's casket was carried by an antique fire truck, one that only him and a few people were able to restore and drive. Fire departments and emergency service workers from all around the state lined up to show their support and salute Captain Barr and his family. Uh, but everybody who comes uh, feels a loss because it's it's one of our own and uh, we all grieve differently and for different amounts of time but everybody um, will be grieving and as you can see people from far and wide came to show their support this morning and to grieve with the sun prairie community 
Captain Barr is being honored as a true hero. Video billboards have carried the message of respect for Captain Barr across the county. Here's one near Rimrock Road that reads, Fallen, Never Forgotten. And Sun Prairie Police will have a press conference on Monday at 4 to provide an update to the explosion. NBC 15 will be there and will bring you the latest information online and on air. July. I feel like I've just been feeling sticky all day today. <laughs> to yeah, it's been a little humid out there. All right, thanks, Brian. Well, thank you for watching. We hope to see you back here tomorrow.